Hello everyone and welcome to our save point series. In this episode we're going to work on our save points and bring up the little menu that comes up to confirm whether or not we want to save the game at that location. So let's get started to put this into our project. So we now need to make it so it shows a menu to save our game uh, when we enter a save spot. So we're going to go to our UI folder here and design our widget for this. And this will be a dialog box underscore save game. And in here, we're going to add a background blur. And a stretch across the whole entire thing. with the blur strength of five. I then want to add a border in here. That'd be centered in the canvas. So anchor to center and aligned 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and set the position to zero, zero. The size here, we're going to go up to let's say 300. No, maybe let's do 500. Yeah. And size Y will do as 300. In this border here, we're going to change the background here to be black, like so. And inside the border here, we're going to have another border. This one's going to be white. And also, when we put this into a vertical box, my apologies. So, right click on that second border and wrap with a vertical box. There you go. And this border up top here can be white and remain at the top. And inside there, we put some text giving us an instruction to the player. In this text here, we're going to change the color here to black and type in here, do you wish to save your progress? And I'll take it to auto wrap. Um, yeah. And we'll put this as padding here of say 10, bring it in like so. Okay, so next I need to put in the buttons for yes and no. Do I want to save progress? Yes or no. So in a side that vertical box, we're going to put in a horizontal box. And then they're going to have the buttons button. And in there's going to have some text. And this text is going to say save. And we're going to set the padding of this to be 10 as well. And we're going to go to our button and tell it to fill the available space. We also want to have a cancel button. So I'm going to duplicate the button here. And this, this one here is going to be cancel. And I'll put a little bit of spacing between the two of them as well. So we can probably use a spacer to help with this that in between the two buttons there the size here of 25 now I just want to put the the arrangement of this but these buttons here to have no background color and button here to have no background color I'm going to tell my hot the box here to be uh, filled into the center of the Dialog window. Okay, so there is our dialog box. Uh, let's start with cancel. It's super easy. We click on cancel here. Create the or change the name of it actually. Cancel button, and we will go down to the on clicked event. And quite simply, this one is just remove from parent. So it doesn't do anything. Um, when it does remove from parent, we usually want to change the input mode again um, accordingly. So on here, we're going to get the player controller. Uh, probably did before removing parent happens. Get the player controller, and we're going to set input mode to uh, game only. And then plug that into remove parent. But actually, we probably want to set show mouse cursor to be off as well. So set show mouse cursor. Leave that as off well when this dialog window opens though we want to change the input mode and the set here so we can go to construct 
going to get the player controller set input mode to UI only which the focus will be self in fact actually we'll make that just the uh, the button here so we rename to confirm a save button yep um we'll put that in there and we'll take that be the one that's focused um yeah so we set the input mode to ui only and then we tell it to set show mouse cursor to true see what we're doing uh yeah so when we click on it it'll cancel and remove it from the screen so leave it like that for now uh let's just get appearing in the screen here so i'm going to go to our save game object now we go to save point and on this sphere i want to enable and disable inputs on this so we're going to right click on this add event you can overlap and you can use any interaction system you want this is just a way of doing it and it's probably the quickest way of doing it that's why i'm, I'm doing it for this uh purpose but you can use any interaction system you may have uh, in this case for the sphere here, we're going to check if other actor is equal to the player character. And that is the case with a branch. We're going to enable input on the thing here. So do back from our uh, get player controller. Back from that. And we're going to uh, enable input. And this would be controller will go into the bottom, obviously, and target would be self. And that'll do for that. Then we also do the end overlap. So end overlap for the component. And this is basically the same thing. I'm going to check that it's each equal to the player character. So and if it is, we're going to tell it to disable input. So I'm going to take the controller again and tell it to disable. And that should go into the player controller and target should be self. So now we have to do is set up the actual interaction key event self. So I'm going to do the uh, I search for a key here. I'm going to choose the E key. And with that, I'm going to tell it to create widget. And we're going to create our dollar box save game. I'm going to add to I'll save so let's test this out in our game here and hit play and go to the save point we're in and hit e okay so if i'm um, in the save point here go back into it make sure it works hit e and now we've got the save file hit cancel and we're back into the game e again do we save progress cancel or save so next we need to hook up the save button. So we're going to go back to our dialog box thing and click on the save button and we're going to add a input for this. On clicked. And the on click for save button is going to get game instance. And from there cast to our save game instance. And from that, we can get the current saved data. And now we can save whatever information we want to save onto it. So for example, I can get the save point data from our save point here. So our dialog box at the moment, we want to ideally send over which save point we're in. Uh, so let's set up the ability to do that. We go to the dialog box, add new variable, and do it save point. And that will be a type of save point uh, object reference. And we made the editable and exposed on spawn. We'll drag that out on here now. And with that, we can now get access to the player start uh, name, anything. So drag from there, player start tag. And our online save data, we're going to drag from there and get the set the Player, oh, sorry, the save point name. Put that in there. And that in there. And we can also save the name of the level as well. So we can do uh, get current 
level 9. And we're going to set level name to that variable there. Okay. So we've got save point and the name being set across to our save game object. With that done, we then want to do the actual save game to slot. Now this will be better probably used as a function, which we can tidy up in a moment. But first of all, let's just see if it works. We've got a save game to slot here. The save game object is this one. And the slot name is going to be its slot name that it has. So drag from there and search for slot name. And that can go into there. Compile and save that. Okay, so it's a bit messy, but I said we'll tie this up in a moment. But this should functionally work. So let's go back to here. Actually, once we've done that, we then want it to remove from the screen all this stuff. So I'm going to copy all this stuff. And in fact, actually, let's make a, fu um, a function on here. Or event rather. And we'll do remove window. Put that in there. And we'll just call it at the end here. Okay. Now we just need to send over the save point variable across. So when we go to our save point, you'll see the save point reference is now here. If it doesn't appear straight away, just refresh the node and it should appear. The save point we'll put in self. And that should be it. So let's test this out in our game. So what's going to happen is we're going to spawn at our normal spot and then we're going to run over to the castle, save the game there, close the game, and then reopen it. And when I return to that same save slot, it should take us back to the castle, uh, not at the default starting place. So start game. And we'll load into the world with this one. And let's run over to the castle. And, and we go to this one here. Hit E. Go to save your progress. Save. Now, technically, I've saved that game. So now, I'll hit cancel this. Go back into the game. And choose that same save slot. It should take us back to the castle. Okay, so start game. New save game. There we are, back at the castle. Okay. So as I said, we probably want to tidy up that function, make it a little bit nicer. So let's go through and show how to do that. So go back to the dialog box, save game. As you see, a lot of this is referring from the save game object here. So it makes sense for this function to belong to the save game object. So let's go onto that one and go to save game uh, for the player save data. And we'll make a new event in here. This will be like save uh, at save point. Okay, okay, we've got save point. And the inputs here will be save point. And that'll be a save point reference. And we're also going to want a player reference because we're using player stuff up here. So I want also a player reference. Player. Be a third person character. And on save point here, I'm going to call the save player data. Even though we're not actually doing anything there, we want to do that. So we do save player data. Plug in player character. And then I'm going to do all the stuff I've done here on there. So we need to get the uh, save points player start tag and set it to the save point name. So we go back to there. So we get player start tag. And we're going to set that to level name. We're then going to have to get the save points. Um, uh, level name, sorry. The uh, save point name. There you go. We then want to get the, the level name. Uh, so we drag that out and do set level name. And this you can't get from your player save data. You can't get current level. It doesn't exist. That's because it's a static 
um, function and this isn't static so what we need to do is pass that through on our save point here put in level name and that'll be a name reference level name we'll just go into level name so that handles that part that handles this part and then finally we've got a save game to slot from the thing to save game to slot self and then do slot name that in there meaning i can now replace all this stuff i've done here with that information so i can get rid of this and from there i do save point and plug in the relevant information i need here so first thing i need is the save point i'm actually doing this with so we're going to get that from our reference there the player is going to be get player character nope realized uh wrong one get player character cast the player character first cast to third person character i'm just gonna make this pure cast right click click on convert to pure cast it saves me having to plug it in and stuff i'll just drag that into it like that and the level name we're going to get the current level name and that will plug in there there and then plug in the turn value into the level name okay so uh that's that so now we've got that all tidied up and working just fine And there we go, we've now got a fully working save system in our game using save points. However, in the last episode, I'm gonna go through and show you how you actually save various different types of variables on your save game files. So join us on the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can catch all my videos early before anyone else. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.